குட் ஈவினிங் அஸ்பிரண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு டெய்லி நியூஸ் அனாலிசிஸ் பை சங்கர் ஐஎஸ் அகாடமி டுடே ஸ்டேட் இஸ் தேர்ட்டீத் செப்டம்பர் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி த்ரீ டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் ஆர் த லிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் டாபிக்ஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி டுடே நவ் பிஃபோர் கெட்டிங் இன் டு த டிஸ்கஷன் ஐ ஹவ் அன் இம்பார்ட்டன் அனவுன்ஸ்மெண்ட் த அனவுன்ஸ்மெண்ட் இஸ் ரிகார்டிங் ப்ரீ ஸ்ட்ராமிங் டெஸ்ட் சீரியஸ் த செகண்ட் பேட்ச் ஆஃப் ப்ரீ ஸ்ட்ராமிங் டெஸ்ட் சீரியஸ் வில் பிகின் ஆன் ஃபிஃப்டீன்த் அக்டோபர் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி த ஃபஸ்ட் டெஸ்ட் வில் ஹேப்பன் ஆன் டுவெண்ட்டி செகண்ட் அக்டோபர் ஸோ வித் திஸ் அனவுன்ஸ்மெண்ட் நவ் லெட் அஸ் கெட் இன் டு த டிஸ்கஷன் Look at this news article. It is about electoral bonds. The electoral bonds are usually sold for a period of 10 days during the months of January, April, July and October. So releasing electoral bonds in October is a usual part of the schedule. And also there were upcoming elections in many states. So keeping this in mind, central government has announced the sale of electoral bonds from October 4 to October 13. So this is the news given here. In this context let us discuss about electoral bond scheme from prelims perspective first what is electoral bond see electoral bonds are instruments or securities that are used to donate funds to political parties imagine you want to support a political party by giving them money instead of giving direct cash you go to a bank and buy an electoral bond you then take this electoral bond and give it to the political party you support they in turn will deposit it in the bank and get the money so in this way anyone can give funds to political parties one unique thing about this bond is that donor's name is not written on them so the party receiving the money does not know who gave it it is like giving a gift anonymously even though your name is hidden the government keeps track of all electoral bonds issued and check how much money each party gets So in this way it is aimed to be transparent and eliminates all illegal funding to political parties. See the electoral bonds were first introduced in 2018. The scheme was introduced as a part of Finance Bill 2017. With this basics now let us see the provisions of electoral bond scheme. Firstly they are financial instruments in the nature of promissory note or P note. Here we should know what is a promissory note. It is a financial instrument which contains a written promise by one party to pay another party a definite sum of money in some time. So this is the promissory note. And electoral bonds are in the nature of promissory note. Secondly, it will resemble a bank note with no interest and is payable to the bearer on demand. Thirdly, electoral bonds are issued in the multiples of 1000, 10000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh and 1 crores. Fourthly the electoral bonds are available for sale only during specific time period in a year it is not available for sale all throughout the year as we have seen earlier these bonds are sold for 10 days period in the months of january april july and october generally during the years of lok sabha election an additional 30 day time period will be available and moreover the political parties have to redeem the bonds within 15 days Now where can we buy this bonds they are only available in state bank of india and not any other banks who can buy this bonds they can be purchased by any person who is a citizen of india or any entity which is established in india now who can receive this bonds note that not all parties can receive electoral bonds only the parties that satisfy certain conditions are eligible to receive electoral bonds Firstly the party must be registered under section 29A of Representation of Peoples Act 1951 Next the party must have secured not less than 1% of votes polled in Lok Sabha election or assembly election See in November 2022 an amendment was made by central government in electoral bond scheme By this amendment The sale of electoral bonds can be extended for a period of 2 weeks during the election time. So this is all about the electoral bonds. Now we will move to the next topic. Take a look at this editorial article. It is written by a former IPS officer. The author here cites the example of recent 128th Constitution Amendment Act which provides 33 percentage reservation of seats for women in both Lok Sabha and Legislative Assembly of every state. The article also suggests to implement the same process in the police force. That is the author suggests to increase the representation of women in police force 
to 33 percentage by bringing uniform police act for a entire country he makes this suggestion mainly for two reasons the first reason is to bring uniformity in reservation for women across the country see police is a state subject it is in the seventh schedule of the constitution so different state has different percentage of women in police force for example bihar provides 35 percentage of reservation for women uttar pradesh has only 20 percentage of women reservation on other hand states like kerala mizoram and goa do not have a policy of reservation for women so bringing uniformity is the first reason secondly according to criminal law and criminal procedure certain reports and statements are to be mandatorily recorded by a woman police officer for example arrest and search of a woman accused must be done by a woman police officer the protection of children from sexual offences act that is pokso act has further enlarged the scope of women recruitment in police force but the available women force is insufficient even in dealing with the cases that are related to women because of these two reasons the author is suggesting to bring uniform police act for entire country this will provide 33 percentage women reservation in police force so this is the crux of the article given here now let us see how to use these points in main sensor writing i have chosen a question from gs paper 2 in 2023 mains question paper look at this question explain the constitutional perspectives of gender justice with the help of relevant constitutional provisions and case laws this is a 15 mark question the keyword in the question is explain when you see the explain in the question you should clarify the concept with the relevant facts and implications now let us see how to approach this question see basically the question talks about gender justice so in the introduction part you can explain briefly about gender justice since the question also asks for examples you can split the body of the answer into two parts in first part you can quote certain constitutional provisions and in the second part you can quote some landmark case laws here case laws are nothing but law that is created by judicial decisions so with this approach let us try to answer this question in the introduction you can write about what is gender justice see gender justice is a systematic redistribution of power opportunities and access for people of all genders it seeks to promote equitable development opportunities for all irrespective of biological sex even though the constitution of india does not explicitly mention the word gender justice it has various provisions to ensure gender justice for all citizens so in this way you can write the introduction for the question now moving on to the body of the answer in the first part you can write some of the constitutional provisions that ensure gender justice for example you can write these points first you can quote the preamble preamble commits to secure social economic and political justice it upholds liberty of thoughts and expression equality of status and opportunity secondly article 14 of constitution guarantees equality before law and equal protection of laws to everyone thirdly article 15 prohibits discrimination against any citizen on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth fourthly article 15 section 3 allows the state to make special provisions for women and children then article 16 provides for equality of opportunity in public employment and also provides for non discrimination of any citizens in the matter of employment on the grounds of sex then you can quote the article 39 it directs the states to ensure that men and women receive equal payment for equal work so this is a dpsp provision and also the article 42 directs the states to make provisions for securing just and human conditions for work and maternity relief so these are the important constitutional provisions that ensure gender justice you can use these provisions in the first part of the answer and you can end the first part by saying that as a constitution mentions these provisions the judiciary have decided cases 
by interpreting the constitution in various cases. So these are reflected in the form of case laws. With this we can end the first part and move on to the next part. In the second part you can highlight some of the case laws that ensure gender justice. Shah Bono case in 1985. In this case the Supreme Court held that Muslim woman is entitled to maintenance from her ex-husband under section 125 of code of criminal procedure. This emphasizes the right to life and personal dignity under article 21. Secondly, Vishaka and others vs state of Rajasthan case in 1997. Before this case, there was no legislation to address sexual harassment at workplace. So in this landmark judgment, Supreme Court laid down certain guidelines to address and prevent harassment in workplace. Thirdly, in Josephine Shine vs Union of India case, in 2018, the Supreme Court decriminalized adultery and struck down section 497 of IPC. Then in Navtej Singh Johar vs Union of India case in 2018, Supreme Court decriminalized consensual homosexual acts. The court noted that LGBTQ community possess the same human, fundamental and constitutional rights as any other individual and they have the right to equality and life with dignity. So these are the important cases which you can mention in the second part of your answer. Then you can also write about the recently released Handbook on Gender Stereotypes by Supreme Court of India. The goal of the handbook is to encourage use of gender neutral words in judiciary. And you can also add the 128th Constitutional Amendment Act that was recently introduced in Parliament. This act provides for 33% of reservation for women in both Lok Sabha and Legislative Assembly. Since this is a 15 mark question, we have already mentioned 13 points. So you can end the second part here and write the conclusion for the question. In conclusion, you can write like this. So the constitution of India provided a comprehensive framework for promoting gender equality and addressing gender based discrimination. And the landmark case laws provided by Supreme Court have protected gender justice according to growing needs of modern society. By following our constitution's spirit, we can achieve gender justice, thereby achieving sustainable development goals 5 and 10 and thereby we can remove overall inequality. So this is how you can end the question. See the questions like this cannot be written on the spot. It requires background clarification and a pre-prepared template. Hope you got it through this discussion. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next article discussion. Look at this news article. It is about windfall tax. In India, the windfall taxes were first imposed in 2022 due to increase in global oil prices as a result of Russian invasion on Ukraine. The news is that government on Friday has increased the windfall tax on crude petroleum. So in this context, let us understand windfall tax and why it is imposed. First of all, what is windfall tax? A windfall tax in simple terms is like an extra tax that government may charge when certain companies or individuals unexpectedly make a lot of money. Imagine a country that heavily relies on production of certain mineral. For many years, the price of this mineral was relatively low. However, suddenly there is a global shortage of this mineral and its price skyrockets. Companies involved in mining this mineral make unexpectedly huge profits because of this price rise. So in order to capture some of these excessive profits, government may introduce a new tax called windfall tax. This tax is not part of regular taxation system, but it is specifically aimed at taxing extraordinary gains made during extraordinary circumstances. It helps the government to generate additional revenue and can be used for various purposes such as funding public services or addressing income inequality. Windfall taxes are imposed when there is increase in profits which are caused by factors that are beyond a company's control like changes in global markets, natural resources or unforeseen economic events. Let us see a real life example. We all know that Russia is one of the biggest oil producers in the world. When Russia-Ukraine war started, many western countries 
ஸ்டாப்டு பர்ச்சேசிங் ஆயில் ஃப்ரம் ரஷ்யா ஸோ திஸ் லீட் டு டிக்ரீஸ் இன் ஆயில் சப்ளை வி நோ தட் வென் சப்ளை இஸ் ரெடியூஸ்ட் அண்ட் டிமாண்ட்ஸ் ரிமைன் சேம் தென் இட் வில் ரிசல்ட் இன் ஷார்ப் ரைஸ் இன் ப்ரைஸ் ரைஸ் டியூ டு திஸ் மெனி ஆயில் கம்பெனிஸ் ஆர் சீயிங் ஹியூஜ் ப்ராஃபிட்ஸ் தஸ் தீஸ் ஹியூஜ் ப்ராஃபிட்ஸ் ஆர் டேக்ஸ்ட் அண்டர் வின்ஃபால் டேக்ஸ் நோ தட் வின்ஃபால் டேக்ஸ் இஸ் அ ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் ஸ்பெஷல் அடிஷ்னல் எக்ஸைஸ் டியூட்டி எஸ்ஏஇடி நவ் லெட் எஸ் சி வாட் இட் இஸ் சி வின்ஃபால் டேக்ஸ் இஸ் அ டேர்ம் யூஸ் டு டினோட் வேரியஸ் செஸஸ் தே ஜென்ரலி கம்ஸ் அண்டர் சென்ட்ரல் எக்ஸைஸ் டேக்ஸஸ் அண்ட் டியூட்டிஸ் வின்ஃபால் டேக்ஸஸ் ஆர் இம்போஸ்ட் ஆன் டொமஸ்டிக் க்ரூட் ஆயில் ப்ரொடெக்ஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆன் எக்ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபியூயல் தீஸ் டேக்ஸஸ் டிஃபர் வித் இன் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கமாடிட்டிஸ் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் இன் கேஸ் ஆஃப் டொமஸ்டிக் க்ரூட் ஆயில் அண்ட் ஏடிஎஃப் எக்ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் த வின்ஃபால் டேக்ஸ் இஸ் இன் த ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் ஸ்பெஷல் அடிஷ்னல் எக்ஸைஸ் டியூட்டி அண்ட் ஃபார் டீசல் இட் இஸ் அ காம்பினேஷன் ஆஃப் எஸ்ஏஇடி அண்ட் அடிஷ்னல் எக்ஸைஸ் டியூட்டி ஜென்ரலி த டியூட்டிஸ் ஆர் ரிவைஸ்ட் ஒன்ஸ் இன் எவ்ரி ஃபோர்ட் நைட் தட் இஸ் ஃபோர்டீன் டேஸ் தே ஆர் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் குளோபல் க்ரூட் ஆயில் ப்ரைசஸ் அண்ட் மூமெண்ட் ஆஃப் மார்ஜின்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபியூவல் இன் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் மார்க்கெட் there are certain reasons behind the imposition of windfall tax the government uses these windfall taxes to fund various social welfare schemes it is also used to supplement the revenue of central government it helps the government to narrow the widened trade deficit of the country so these are some of the reasons why government impose windfall tax but there are also many criticisms for imposing windfall tax Some people argue that these taxes can discourage businesses and individuals from taking risks and making new investments. Critics say that these taxes can reduce the funds available for innovation and job creation. So this is all about windfall tax. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article from business page. The news is that last Tuesday the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development that is NABARD issued social bonds for first time with a total size of 1040 crores and the bank also announced that it is going to list these bonds on bombay stock exchange know that the social bonds are fixed income securities which means the holders of the bonds are paid with fixed amount of interest also note that amount obtained from issuing social bonds are used to finance new social impact projects Sometimes the amount is also used to finance existing social projects. Now coming back to the news. Nabot said that amount raised through the social bonds would be used to refinance Jal Jeevan Mission in Telangana. So this is all about the news. In this discussion, let us see some exam related points about Nabot. First let us see the background of creation of Nabot. After India's independence, RBI has acted as sole authority for all credit functions in India. It also managed the credit to agriculture sector and rural development. So RBI was burdened with huge responsibilities. This resulted in inefficiency in providing credit in order to boost the rural economy. So during 1979 central government insisted RBI to set up a committee to review the credit availability to rural development. As a result on March 30 1979 RBI had set up a committee to review the arrangements for institutional credit for agriculture and rural development This committee was established under chairmanship of Sri Sivaraman who is a former member of planning commission The committee recommended that a new organization should be established for providing attention and credit to rural development So based on the recommendations of this committee central government has established NABARD in 1982 and later the agricultural credit functions of RBI were transferred to NABARD so this is how NABARD came into existence now we shall see some important points about NABARD NABARD was established in 1982 under the provisions of National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Act 1981 as NABARD was established based on the act it is a statutory body the nabard comes under jurisdiction of union ministry of finance the headquarters of nabard is located at mumbai in maharashtra the nabard also has 31 regional offices across the country note that nabard is fully owned by government of india now talking about the role of nabard 
NABARD is India's apex development bank that focuses primarily on rural sector. It provides credit facilities for agriculture and rural development. Apart from this, the bank is responsible for development of small industries in rural areas. Overall, NABARD is continuously working to promote sustainable and equitable agriculture and rural development. Now finally, let us see some important functions of NABARD. Firstly, the NABARD assists Government of India, RBI and state governments in policy formulation on matters related to agricultural credit and rural development. Secondly, NABARD revises regional rural banks, state cooperative banks and district central cooperative banks. NABARD also engages in institutional development and capacity building of such banks to strengthen the rural credit delivery system. Thirdly, NABARD provides support to research and development in rural sector. It also carry out rural innovations. Fourthly, it provides loans to state governments for developing rural infrastructure and strengthening the cooperative credit structure. Fifthly, the NABARD provides refinance to rural financial institutions. These institutions in turn provide credit to farmers and non-farm activities in rural areas. And finally, NABARD provides loans for primary agricultural credit societies, cooperative marketing societies and farmers producer organization. These institutions in turn help the farmers by providing them affordable credit. So in this discussion, we have seen the creation of NABARD, role played by NABARD in rural sector and major functions of NABARD. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Take a look at this news article. According to the article, the Asian Development Bank has approved capital management reforms. These reforms will allow the bank to give out loans and at the same time it will help the bank to maintain risk associated with it. So this measure will increase the lending capacity of the bank and it will also unlock 100 billion in funds over next 10 years to support Asia and Pacific region. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through Asian Development Bank. See, the Asian Development Bank is a regional development bank that provides loans for development projects in Asia-Pacific region. It was established in the year 1966 at Manila in Philippines. It originally had 31 founding members and currently has 68 members. Among these 68 members, 49 are from Asia and 19 members are from outside Asia. Remember, India is one of the founding members of Asian Development Bank. A core objective of Asian Development Bank is poverty reduction. It works towards reducing income disparities and improving living conditions of people in the region. So in this regard, it assists the member nations by providing loans, technical assistance, grants, equity investments, to promote social and economic development. ADB works with government, private sector, non-government organization, development agencies and community-based organizations to fulfill this goal. Coming to its organization, the highest decision-making body of ADB is Board of Governors. This Board of Governors comprises one representative from each member nation, that is 48 members from Asia-Pacific region and 19 members from outside the region. Know that the decision making process of ADB is similar to that of World Bank. That is, the number of votes controlled by a member is concurrent with the number of shares held by that member. For example, Japan has highest voting power in the bank because it has invested more in the bank. See, the largest shareholders of ADB were Japan, United States, China and India. Japan and United States both control 15.6% of total shares, China controls 6.4% and India has 6.3% of shares. Note that India is the fourth largest shareholder in Asian Development Bank. ADB has given loans for many public projects in India. For example, the metro network expansion and road construction in many parts of India are funded by ADB. The bank has also given loans for improving energy security in Tiripura and waste management in Tamil Nadu. So these are some of the examples of Asian Development Bank's support to India. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. 
எம் எஸ் சுவாமிநாதன் த இந்தியாஸ் கிரேட் அக்ரிகல்ச்சரல் சயின்டிஸ்ட் அண்ட் எக்காலஜிஸ்ட் பாஸ்ட் அவே ரீசெண்ட்லி வி ஆல் நோ அபவுட் ஹிஸ் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் டு கிரீன் ரெவல்யூஷன் அண்ட் ஃபுட் செக்யூரிட்டி பட் ஹி ஆல்சோ கான்ட்ரிபியூட்டட் டு ப்ரொடெக்ஷன் அண்ட் கன்சர்வேஷன் ஆஃப் என்விரான்மெண்ட் த நியூஸ் ஆர்டிக்கல் ஹியர் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் ஹிஸ் வேரியஸ் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் டு என்விரான்மெண்டல் கன்சர்வேஷன் அண்ட் வி ஷால் லுக் அட் தம் இன் அவர் டிஸ்கஷன் தீஸ் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் கேன் பி யூஸ்ஃபுல் ஃபார் அவர் மெயின்ஸ் எக்ஸாம் ஃபர்ஸ்ட்லி வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு கன்சர்வேஷன் ஆஃப் மேங்ரூ எக்கோ சிஸ்டம் Swaminathan stressed on strict measures to prevent any destruction to mangrove forest. He also fought for the restoration of mangroves which were partially degraded. Especially he focused on maintaining the genetic diversity of Indo-Malaysian ecosystem because he considered this as a center of diversity for mangrove species. Secondly in a debate for development versus conservation of nature his view was to achieve harmony between populations of human and animals and the natural resources according to him unless we focus on improving the livelihood of people it is not possible to conserve the nature thirdly there is always a concern among developing and underdeveloped countries about biological and e waste that are dumped on them See most of the times rich and developed countries dump their e-waste and other harmful waste on developing countries to fight against this Swaminathan rightly argued for need for international protocol and biosafety under convention on biological diversity fourthly after becoming the president of international union for conservation of nature that is IUCN In 1984 he stressed the need for IUCN to change from eurocentric to earth centric organization the relevance of this statement can be seen now as this is the stand of india in various international forums thus leading the collective voice of global south countries lastly as a president of national commission of farmers he gave a formula for calculating minimum support price the calculation of msp includes comprehensive cost of production of crops plus 50 percentage also known as c2 plus 50 percentage so this formula was devised by ms swaminathan it will be hugely beneficial for farmers so these are the important contributions of ms swaminathan in production and conservation of environment other than green revolution and food security with this we conclude this discussion now let us move to the next part of our discussion Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. It is about Asian Development Bank. Which of the following countries is not a founding member of Asian Development Bank? The correct answer is option D. China is not a founding member of Asian Development Bank. The bank was established in 1966 and China became a member only in 1986. Note that India is a founding member of Asian Development Bank. Now look at the second question. It is about electoral bond scheme. Look at the first statement. It is a form of promissory note used to fund the political parties. Yes, this statement is correct. Look at the second statement. It provides complete anonymity to the donor of the bond. This statement is incorrect because the government can still track the donor even though the bond doesn't bear the name of the donor. Look at the third statement. It is given to political parties which secured at least 5% of valid votes in assembly or lok sabha elections. This statement is also incorrect because it is issued to the parties which secured not less than 1% of votes in lok sabha or assembly election. So the correct answer is option A. Look at the third question. It is about windfall tax. It is a taxation on unexpected rise in profits of the companies. So the correct answer is option B. Now look at the fourth question. It is about NABARD. Look at the first statement. It is a statutory body comes under jurisdiction of Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. In this statement, the first part is correct. NABARD is a statutory body and it is established by NABARD Act 1982. But the second part of the statement is incorrect. NABARD comes under jurisdiction of Ministry of Finance. Now look at the second statement. It provides direct credit assistance to rural household. This statement is incorrect. NABARD does not provide direct credit to rural household. It provides finance and refinance to state governments and various financial institutions. These entities in turn provides loans to rural household. So this statement is incorrect. Look at the third statement. It is jointly owned by center and state governments. This is also incorrect. 
நபார்ட் இஸ் ஹோல்லி ஓன்ட் பை சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட் ஸோ த கரெக்ட் ஆன்சர் இஸ் ஆப்ஷன் டி தீஸ் ஆர் த மெயின்ஸ் கொஸ்டின் ஃபார் யூ டுடே இன்ட்ரெஸ்டட் ஆஸ்பிரண்ட்ஸ் கேன் ரைட் த ஆன்சர் அண்ட் போஸ்ட் இட் இன் த கமெண்ட் செக்ஷன் வித் திஸ் வி ஹவ் கம் டு த எண்ட் ஆஃப் த டிஸ்கஷன் இஃப் யூ லைக் த வீடியோ ப்ளீஸ் ஷேர் இட் வித் இயர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் டோன்ட் ஃபர்கெட் டு சப்ஸ்கிரைப் டு சங்கர ஏஸ் யூடியூப் சேனல் தேங்க்ய